I've always had a hate-hate relationship with amp sims. The red bean isn't allowed anywhere near my studio because, well, let's face it, 500 shitty sounds and not even one good one isn't exactly something to get excited about. Now, I took some heat from my last video, the fans deserve better, because some of you guys got offended that I said auto-tuning shitty vocals makes for a weak product. Oh, boo-fucking-who. But some other guys asked me some intelligent questions like, what do I think of the new technology amp sims like the Kemper profiling amp and the Axe Effects? And while I haven't had a chance to try out the Kemper, I did have an Axe Effects come into the studio a couple years back, and I was seriously underwhelmed. Quite frankly, my 5150 blew the doors off of it. However, a friend of mine loaned his Axe FX2 for me to put up against the real deal. And in my opinion, the Axe FX2's saving grace is its tone matching system. And I have to say, I'm pretty impressed with the results. Now, since I'm a metal producer, 90% of the time I'm recording heavy rhythm guitars. And that's why I've designed the shootout around, because most amp sins fall apart when it comes to high gain rhythm tone. I put the Axe FX up against a 5150, a Mesodual Rectifier, and a Framus Cobra. And to make things interesting, I brought in my very good friend, Mr. Mike Wisnuck, to play drums, because I've never heard a snare sample that I didn't hate. This is a double blind shootout, meaning you'll have to judge with your ears which is the real amp and which is the Axe Effects. I'll post up the results at the end of the video. And if you guys like the tones I've come up with, check out the link I've posted in the video description for my Axe Effects 2 Tone Match presets. So there you go. In my opinion, the Axe FX2 holds up pretty well in a mix. If someone brought it in the studio, I'd probably want to hook it up as opposed to wanting to throw it in the garbage like I would with the Red Bean. But there are some pros and cons to this thing. At $21.99, it is goddamn expensive. And the foot controller is another $750, which in my opinion is a fucking scam. Fractal Audio should be ashamed of themselves for charging so much for a pretty looking pedal board. And if you're a gigging musician, consider this. While the idea of plugging directly into a club sound system is tempting, in reality, you're asking for a lot of trouble. You're going to be relying on a sound guy to have the ability to run your Axe effects not only through the main PA system, but to also give you and your entire band a monitor mix where you can hear it clearly. Let's let that sink in for a minute. You're going to be relying on a local bar's sound guy. Are you out of your fucking mind? I've been to enough shows and I've seen enough bands try and hook these things up to tell you it's mission fucking impossible. The most likely thing the guy running the soundboard is gonna do is give you a deer in a headlights look. Duh. This is going to be beyond his abilities. 
Not all the time, but enough of the time to make you wish you had bought a cabinet and a power amp. Now, I know there are some great sound guys out there, but they are not going to be working at the club your band is gigging at. So when you add the cost of a power amp and a cabinet to the mix, the Axe Effects is a very expensive proposition. And when you consider that you can pick up a used 5150 for between six and $700 on eBay, and a good Meza cabinet will cost you about a grand, suddenly the numbers don't make very much sense. Choose wisely.